Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday, September 24th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center, your local National Weather Service forecast office, and your local officials. We continue to track Hurricane Maria here, pretty large and sprawling hurricane. Uh, this is similar to storms like Hurricane Irene in 2011, storms that have their inner cores disrupted like Maria did when it passed over Puerto Rico, and then as a result, their wind fields grow quite large as they move up into the southwestern Atlantic here, and they normally struggle to regain anything like their former intensity. In this case, Maria used to be Category 5. We've seen nothing like that kind of recovery. The pressure has gone down about 17 millibars after Puerto Rico, but the wind field really has not intensified, and this maintains winds that are rather slow for what you'd expect for this pressure. 943 winds are only 105 miles per hour, still dangerous and powerful, but nothing like what you would normally expect. What this tells you when the pressure is so low like this is that the wind field is quite large, and you can see that here. This is all hurricane force at flight level in purple, and uh, this is a huge storm. Now the reason these struggle to strengthen at all, and Maria really has not intensified at all in the last three days, wind-wise, the reason they struggle is for a variety of reasons. One is that since the circulation is so large, it uh, often will pull dry air in from the environment more often because it's just pulling in air from so many directions so far from the center that it's really easy to tap into any dry air sources around the hurricane. In addition, the wind field extends so far from the storm that as the storm is moving north like this, the wind field up here is already cooling the ocean underneath, and then the inner core comes in, and then the outer part of the wind field has already churned up the water and made it colder, so the core encounters colder water than normal, especially when it's in the subtropics like this. The warm water is not very deep here compared to farther down in, say, the Caribbean or the tropical Atlantic, so it's really easy for the core to encounter cooler water than normal because of the storm's own size, and it's very difficult to contract this large wind field and construct a tight inner core with a strong eye wall and a strong vertical circulation in the middle of the storm. So for all of these reasons, uh, Maria has not been able to increase its maximum winds, but it is, you know, storms like Sandy, storms like Irene, they, they have weak winds comparatively to the extreme hurricanes we see farther south, but they are huge, and this can cause problems because even if the hurricane passes offshore of the United States, as this one is expected to, the wind field could still impact land significantly given its extent. So that's going to be what we're watching here over the next few days. This is the water vapor shot showing Maria, and you can see that the outflow is quite expansive here. Not a lot of wind shear now. The wind shear has gone down, as we talked about last time, as this upper low has sort of cut off and tilted a little more negatively here, and so we have this nice outflow toward the northwest. So Maria is not really suffering from shear today, but uh, the water to the north gets a little colder because of Hurricane Jose a week ago. This is where Maria is now. Uh, Jose kind of cooled off this water south of the Gulf Stream, currently to the north of Maria. And so as the system moves north, it will be encountering even cooler water, and this will likely cause the winds, uh, the maximum winds to decrease in strength further as Maria goes on into tomorrow and uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. And even if the system nears the Gulf Stream, you can see the Gulf Stream is still warm here, this band of warm water. And this can often help hurricanes, and you'll hear people talk about its positive benefits to a hurricane's intensity. But in this case, Maria is so large that even if the eye were to theoretically end up right over the Gulf Stream, its circulation is pulling ocean fluxes off of a very large area that includes mostly cool water upwelled by Jose and including north of the Gulf Stream. And so this is unlikely, the Gulf Stream is unlikely to cause Maria to gain any strength even if it were to end up this close and end up right over the Gulf Stream. And so that's unlikely to really be a factor here. And given the, the general coolness of this water, uh, Maria will likely weaken gradually over the next few days, and this is likely the last day that it will maintain the intensity that it has now, and beginning tomorrow, we will likely see a very slow, gradual weakening of the storm, but expected to remain a hurricane and a powerful, large circulation. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. This north-northwest drift is likely to continue, and then a turn sharply to the east out into the middle of the Atlantic is forecast. And why is this track the way it is? We've been talking about it for some time now. Here's the water vapor imagery showing the big ridge over the northeastern US. And then we have X Jose here, so a little low pressure. And then we have the ridge to the north 
uh, or east of the hurricane now, helping to direct the system toward the north-northwest. But Jose is here, and so there's a little bit of a weakness in the ridge. So instead of Maria turning hard left south of the New England ridge into the Carolinas, instead it's moving a little bit more toward the north because Jose is here providing a weakness. Now Jose is weakening and moving away, so it is going to allow the hurricane to approach rather close to the eastern U.S. coast, but the reason it's going to turn sharply to the right is because this big ridge to the northwest is going to be shifting to the east and weakening as it does so over the next couple of days. So if you fast forward to the midpoint of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, the hurricane's going to have moved up into this position, but this ridge is going to have kind of moved out over here and weakened a bit. So now the steering flow gets weak for a while, and then this jet stream, which you can currently see here, that will shift into New England, and you'll have this big flow out of the west. And so when the hurricane is sitting here, the ridge will be gone and weakening, and this jet stream will come in instead and force the hurricane to turn off toward the east-northeast rather sharply. And so this is unlikely to come up, it's, it's not going to come up, into New England like this and bring impacts well inland into the northeastern U.S. Instead, it's going to come up a certain way and then turn to the right likely harmlessly into the middle of the northwestern Atlantic. But how close this turn is to North Carolina and the mid-Atlantic states is, of course, the key. And there is still, given how weak the steering currents are and the complexity of this pattern, there's still a, a little bit of room for this to get a little closer or farther away from the Outer Banks. And that's what we're watching here on this forecast. You can see by early Wednesday morning, here's the point of closest approach. On this forecast, about 150 miles maybe from the Outer Banks of North Carolina. But that's still close enough to bring impacts if this forecast is taken verbatim because you can see the extent of the tropical storm force wind field in yellow here, this is huge. So even if the hurricane translates up to this position, that tropical storm force wind 40 miles per hour or stronger would be impacting outer banks of North Carolina and the storm surge could be an issue as high water is pushed a couple of feet above normal in spots um, out of the northeast as this large wind field pushes the ocean water. And so some coastal flooding is possible and these winds of course uh, would be disruptive. Now if the hurricane goes just a little bit to the left here, which is still possible, it could bring the hurricane force wind field a little bit closer to Cape Hatteras and it would bring the tropical storm force wind field over a larger swath of coastline, potentially even up into portions of the mid-Atlantic coastline and farther down to the southwest in North Carolina. So you could see tropical storm watches up for a substantial section of coastline here, and you might even see hurricane watches for coastal North Carolina, depending on the short-term motion of Maria and whether or not it deviates to the left of forecast. Right now it's forecast to be well offshore, and hurricane force winds would not be expected on this forecast, but tropical storm force winds could easily occur and uh, could be quite disruptive. And be prepared though, in your preparations, be prepared for the possibility of hurricane force winds here, just in case Maria deviates to the west. Uh, which, you know, is still on the table, can't completely rule out a closer pass to the coast, and be prepared just in case that happens. Uh, but for now, it looks like the most likely outcome is tropical storm conditions, potentially along the coast, and uh, the potential for high water uh, from the ocean being pushed in to these bays and gulfs here. So we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, stay tuned to your local National Weather Service office and the National Hurricane Center for the most current information on Hurricane Maria and to be prepared for these impacts as they draw near around the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time frame. This will be per perhaps a drawn out period as this could be a couple of days where it's close enough to bring impacts before it finally turns as the hurricane will be moving slowly. And so all of midweek, we could be seeing uh, impacts along the coast. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.